Oh, hello there. My name is Georgina. I am the Honest Vocal Coach. I've been teaching for 21 years, but you are on my vlog channel. If you haven't been involved in my vlog so far, feel free to take a look. And if you like what you see, give it a subscribe. Now, if you didn't know, I'm quite crafty as well. I don't mean crafty like cheeky crafty, you know, but I've been crafting my entire life. I've always been into cross stitch. I learned quite early on and it became something that was just really great for my mental health, a way of switching off from stress of life. And when I'm going through tough times, times cross stitch has always been there for me to sort of pick up and just create now this year i decided instead of having resolutions to not do stuff i was going to do resolutions to do something new now when i was i would say maybe 13 14 she taught me her knitting machine and she also taught me how to crochet now, years and years and years later, I can't remember what she taught me. So I made a resolution of this year to relearn the crochet and get right into it again, because it does make me happy. Those that watch my vlog already have seen the items that I've been making from granny squares to hexagon cardigans and things like that. They've seen me shopping and all of the things that I've been buying from buttons, to stitch markers, to measuring tapes, to this latest purchase, which is a wool sort of holder, if you like, uh, which spins, it's magnetised at the top, it's great for getting the wool out of. I've got a wool winder over here, everything. Since January of this year, I've been totally immersing myself in crochet and as you can see behind me slightly obsessed with yarn and different types of wools i think my favorite wools right now have to be chunky i like dk i think it's a nice size but i love the fact that with chunky you can achieve so much so quickly uh, the cardigan the hexagon cardigan i made recently was with chunky wool and i got it just like did it in four days I was really pleased with myself so in today's video i'm going to be doing my very first tutorial now my channel is not turning into a total crochet channel but there's going to be an element of it in here i've created a playlist down below you'll be able to see it on my main home page i'll also put the playlist in the description box as well so you can find everything crochet there are some videos there that are vlog ones which will show you where i shop where i've been buying my wool and stuff like that but this is going to be the first tutorial so in today's tutorial i'm going to be showing you how to make a granny square and the granny square that I've chosen is a basic granny square, so really basic. There are hundreds of different granny square designs, from sunflowers to all sorts of things, animals, loads of different types of granny squares. But I'm going to be showing you how to do a basic granny square. As I say on my reaction channel, let's dive in. So let's start off with what you're actually going to need. You're going to need some scissors a tapestry or darning needle and a crochet hook. Now I'm not gonna go into all the different sizes of wool and yarn today. Rule of thumb is you want to get a crochet hook that is slightly smaller than the wool that you're using. Now all wool will come with a paper wrapper on it. And on that wrapper, it will advise you of the best size crochet hook that you can use. Uh, this one is a double knit yarn here, and it's 100 grams. Uh, washing instructions, you can see on the back there that how many uh, stitches, what size crochet hook, whether it's acrylic, the washing information, that's all going to be on the back. In some cases, it's on the inside, so you would rip it open and it'll be on the inside. Some also have pattern ideas on the inside as well. So I'm going to be using an acrylic yarn today, and this one is DK, which stands for double knitting. So to begin with, we need to work out how to start the whole thing. Now, in this tutorial, I'm not showing you how to do a magic ring but I am showing you how to do just a good starter so we're going to create a slip knot first of all now my 
way of crochet is with my right hand but if people are interested i can flip the video and show you it on the left hand side so it becomes a left-handed version so let me know i can always create that for you so here's the end what we're going to do is we're going to almost like we're snipping it with scissors between our pointer finger and our middle finger there and the long length comes down the center you're then going to tip over the smaller end of the yarn then you take your long yarn your longer piece and you're going to then fold that across the top of the smaller piece like this so you create an x what we then do is take the wool at the back and take it over the top we put our hook through the hole where our finger is and this creates a slip knot now if you want you can slow this video down by using the settings underneath the video so you can slow it down so you can see a little bit clearer if you want to you can also reverse if you've missed it so you can have another look which is something that i use regularly right so we've got our slip knot here next we're going to chain five now ideally you want to hold on to this small piece here there are lots of ways to hold your hook as well but you'll naturally see how i hold the hook throughout the tutorial so we're going to hold this smaller end of the yarn there while still holding the crochet hook i like this particular crochet hook because it's nice and smooth and the yarn slides up and down on it quite nicely um, you will find lots and lots of different types of crochet hooks from ergonomic ones to wood to metal but this is my preferred one at the moment i like the fact that the um measurement is flat here because it fits nicely on my thumb and it's particularly polished and slidey this one so the wool moves around nicely i have had metal ones like this where it's kind of got not stuck but it's slower the way that it moves and that means that it's not quite as highly polished so it's a, one of those things for you really to experiment with crochet hooks to figure out which one you prefer so as i said we're going to chain here so to chain we're going to do yarn behind like that which is yarn over and then pull your yarn and hook through so that's your first chain and again yarn over pull it through yarn over pull it through we're doing five today yarn over pull it through yarn over pull it through and you'll see how i like to hold my wool here my yarn i like to use my little finger for tension and tension is something that takes a little bit of practice to get used to and how you want it to be you can get a yarn ring where the yarn sits under the ring but i prefer to actually use my little finger as my tension arm so you've got your five chains so chain of five what we're then going to do is go through the first so no yarn over anything literally just straight through the first chain yarn over and pull through both so we're going to create a little circle there so you've now got a circle now we're going to create the first square for the granny square and i know we've got a circle here but you'll see what i mean as we go so we're now going to chain two one two which is the start of our first triplet i'm going to show you how to do a, a double crochet and we're going to do three double crochets now this is counted as your first here so that's counted as your first you're then going to do yarn over hook through the center hole get hold of the yarn and you're going to pull it through so now you've got three yarns on the hook i'll do that one more time let's just reverse that so yarn over hook through the center circle grab your yarn again and you've got three on the hook from here we're going to create the double crochet yarn over again through two 
yarn over again through the other two. So you'll see here, this is our chain of two, and then we've got our first double crochet. Now to create the triple, we're gonna add one more. Yarn over through the center circle, grab your yarn again. So you've got your three, yarn over, through two, through two. So that's our first set of three. So you'll see it there, which is the chain, the double crochet, double crochet. Now we're gonna create a corner. Now to create a corner, you can either do three chains or two chains, depending on how tight you want your work to look when it's finished. But I'm gonna do two in this case. So yarn over, through, yarn over, through. So this is gonna become our corner, our first corner. Now we're gonna continue with the triplet of double crochet. Yarn over, through the center, grab your yarn again, you've got your three. Over, through two, through two, and again, yarn over, through the center, through two, through two, one more, yarn over, through the center, through two, through two. So there's our triplet. You see there? Double crochet, double crochet, double crochet. Now there are different terms for the USA from the UK. I'm just gonna stick to the UK terms for now, but in the future, I can add them onto the video should anybody be interested. So now we're gonna create another corner. So you're gonna chain two, one, two, and you're gonna do three more double crochets to create the triple. So you're going through two, through two, and again, through, through two, through two, one more, through two, through two, and then we're gonna chain two again for our last set. So you can see now I've got one, two, three triplets. I've got my chain of two, which was my next corner, and I'm gonna do one more set of three. So off we go again. Oh, let's just pull that out of the way. It does help to keep that out of the way if you can. Don't cut it short, leave it where it is for now. Going through again. And the third one. Like that. Now we've got our final corner, chain two. And what we're gonna do is attach this three over to this three so it creates that fourth corner. Now what you're looking for is the two. So you've got one stitch here, there's number two, and there's number three, which turns into that double. So you want to pick the second. So stitch one, stitch two. Now what you need to do is on that top stitch, you're gonna go through there, the top side, and then you're gonna go through the top again there. So I've gone through the top two, so there'll be yarn underneath there. Now you'll notice with this, I didn't yarn over first because we're just slip stitching them together. So you go through the top two of the stitch, yarn over or under, however you prefer. For me, I prefer yarn, yarn under at this point. Through the stitch that we've just done. And then finally, take that stitch over the top like that. So we've joined it together. So there we are. There is our first square of the granny square. So you've got triplet, 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 triplet. Now for our second row, you're gonna chain three this time. One, two, three. And this forms one of the three, the triplet. And we're gonna go straight in to the hole here. So yarn over, through, grab your yarn. We're creating another double crochet. Through two, through two. Round again. 
through two, through two, what we need to do is create this other corner. So we're going to chain two and you're going to go in the same hole as the one you've just been in to create the corner. Again, with a double crochet and you're doing three of them. So pretty much this whole thing is made up of the triple, the three double crochets. We're going to chain one again to take it to the other corner. And we're going to do another three. One. Two. Three. So we'll see you with the other corner now. Chain two, because this is the corner that we're creating. Turn your work. And we're going through the same hole to create a corner. So same again for that double crochet. One, two, three. Single chain to then go to your other corner for another set of three. Two. Three. And again, we're at the next corner. So you're going to chain two. You're going to go in the same hole. So by now, you're probably picking up the pattern. Oh, I'm putting my end in. There we go. Take that out. That does happen. So you just want to take it back out again. Put it underneath so it's out of the way. So to move forward again, we've got our corner with our two chains in the middle. We're then going to chain one to get into this last corner here. So into this last corner here. There we are. You're going to chain two. One, two. To your corner. Turn your work. And we're going to join it together here. So as before... As you look along your chains here, you want to put it into the stitch, which would be the third across. So you've got one, two and three. So you go up through there, across. So you've got your two on the top. Yarn under in my case, I like the yarn under at this point. And you're going to do all three because it's slip stitching it together. So I'm just going to pause for a second. We're going to get this wool out of the way. There we are. You've now got one row, two rows. So we're on to our third row now. So we're going to continue by adding chain three. One, two, three. So this is now our third row. So you've chained your three. We're then going to do our three double crochets. One, two. So we're going to make our way round again. We've done our three double crochets. Chain one. We're going to create a corner like before. Set of three. One. Two, three, double chain for the corner, turn your work back into the same hole to create the corner. And you've got your three double crochets again. Chain one. To move along. And because you've probably got the hang of it now, 
I'm going to meet up with you again when we get fully round this particular round. Don't forget to chain two for your corners so you're putting two in the corner hole. Okay, so you'll see that I've got all the way round now. Apart from this end, we need to close this up. So as before, you're going to pick out the stitch here to the side of this one. So there we are. So you're through there. You don't need to yarn over. This is creating a slip stitch. So just straight through. Then grab your yarn, pull through. If you need to lift that one over, find it a little bit easier there. And that we've got our three rounds now. So one, two and three. So you see where we are? Now, if you want, you can change colour as you go round with this. But I thought we're just going to stick to a nice simple granny square for now. So you get the hang of it. And this last row, I'm going to show you how to change colour. And you change colour at the end of each row. If you wish. But I'm going to show you how to change colour on this part here. Now what you're going to do is trim this end, this long end, and give yourself plenty of length because we're going to be sewing that in later. There we are. So you get your new colour and I've got a nice golden yellow here. And we're going to loop it through this hoop. So you've got your short end, your long end. Just create and you're going to loop it through like that. Tighten it up by pulling that red end and we're going to continue round for the next one. Now, don't worry about these yet. We're going to sew them in at the end. Now, you can, if you want, not these. There's another way of doing it. Some crocheters will say, what are you doing cutting the yarn? Others don't mind of cutting yarn at all. So, we've got this through here, through that. It's nice and tight. Then going to get your long end of the yellow, the new colour. You're going to chain three, one, two, three. We're going to continue round. Now this is called frogging. Yes, I know. <laughs> it's called frogging because we rip, rip to reverse. So it's called frogging. So if you make a mistake and you need to go backwards, just pull it out and that's called frogging. So we're back to where we were. And to knot the colours together instead... What you would do is cut your short, cut your wool short, your yarn, pull it through the hoop like that and pull. Then you knot this to your yellow. So we get our two colours together and we're going to knot them together. One, two, pull them as close as you want so you can knot them together that way. Now, what you can do at this point is cut them off or weave them in later. I'm going to weave them in. So I'm going to finish this granny square by doing another row. And obviously you've got no hoop at this point. So you go through the hole, chain three, one, two, three. And as before, we're going to jump to this next hole because this is going to form the three across here. Yarn over, through, through two through two and so on we're coming to the corner so we're going to do three chain two for the corner turn your work same hole And then we're going to work our way around. So I'll leave you to it and we'll meet again when we get to there. Okay, so we're just about to get to the end here. Now this is a standard granny square size. So we've got four rounds. One, two, three and four. 
Now you can make your granny square as big or as small as you'd like because you can make a whole granny square blanket. You can just keep going until you, you know, get sick of it. So we're going to join these together now. So we've got our corner and we're going to create this three. So yarn over and we're going to double crochet twice. So two of them. And then we're going to slip stitch into this last one. As before, we're creating a three. So we want to go through this second stitch here. Grab your yarn through. And there we are. So now we're going to tie off by snipping the yellow. But give yourself some length. And we're going to pull it through. Pull it tight and there we are there is our granny square now at this point if you're making a lot of granny squares you can use what's called a blocking board so this is what a blocking board looks like it's a piece of wood with some holes and you get these little metal rods to go with it like this you put them in to then stretch out I'm not sure I'm getting them in the right place, but we'll give it a shot. I'm going to go corner, corner. No, I haven't got them in the right place. <laughs> corner, corner, there we are. So I'll make that a little bit bigger. Now, ideally, when you want to block these granny squares, you spray it with water and it will dry so that you get this perfect square. You don't have to block, but it does make a difference if you're doing a lot of granny squares. Okay, so we're gonna weave in our ends. Let's get our tapestry needle. Some call it tapestry needle, others call it a darning needle. Essentially, it's the same thing. And we're gonna weave in these ends. Now we'll start with this yellow at the front. So you want to try and hide this away. So you tuck it within the top, however you want to do it. We're going to weave in these ends. Now, the reason for weaving the ends in is should any knots come undone, which can happen, you don't want your garment or whatever it is you've made, your project, to unravel. So now I can snip this little end. There we are. So that's nicely woven into that. So at the back, we've got a couple more to do. And we've got our original one. I'm going to weave those in as well. Now the best way to weave in is by going backwards and forwards. And once you've weaved it as much as you want to, you can cut off your end. I'm going to do the last two here as well. So there we are. That is the first granny square. In my next video, I'm going to be doing a tutorial to how to do the moss stitch. So definitely watch out for that. Feel free to subscribe so you can watch my vlog and indeed any more crochet tutorials. And just like Blue Peter, I'm going to show you. Here's one I made earlier. This is a blanket I am currently working on. Started at the center and worked my way out and changed color on every single row. Thanks for watching.